Hi guys, and welcome to the Cheltenham vs Sunderland match review. Well, I say review, it's going to be more of a sort of acknowledgement that this fixture took place. It'll probably only be three, four minutes long. And for those of you who have clicked on this video expecting some, uh, you know, sort of high tempo, screaming, shouting and swearing, then uh, you're not going to get it. And on that note, I do want to apologise for the, uh, the last video, the last review I did uh, from the Doncaster game. Now, um, in my sort of defence, I've never said that this is a PG channel, and I know that a lot of people do like it when I get myself worked up and I'm screaming and shouting and swearing and ranting. But uh, my language was 100% excessive in the last uh, in the last video, and I did get a couple of comments, even though you know these comments did sort of agree with what I was saying in the video. But they also said, you know, I need to remember that I do have uh, a section or a portion of the audience of this channel is uh, quite a younger audience, and it would be a shame if you know sort of parents came on and stopped allowing certain members of the viewers or the audience uh, from watching because of my language so uh, you know I do apologize for that again this isn't a PG channel and I, I will continue to you know like shout and swear in the future but that was absolutely excessive so I do apologize for that and um, like I say a lot of people did enjoy my ranting uh, if you ever look at the likes it was ridiculous and I do appreciate the support but yeah it was absolutely excessive on the uh, on the language Part. So again, I do apologise for anyone who was offended from the, the last review. Um, but on to last night's result. Again, I'm just here to acknowledge it. I don't want to just ignore it and shy away. Um, but uh, yeah, so we, we changed the lineup, which is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see certain people involved. I wanted Matete involved. I didn't want Evans anywhere near the squad, but he, he started again. So as that's the situation we're in, yet again we've gone with an incorrect captain, in my opinion. But I'm not going to keep on going at Evans, you know. But we've dug a bit of a hole for ourselves, we've shot ourselves in the foot where I feel like we feel obliged to play Evans because he's a captain when in reality he's probably one of the worst central midfielders I've ever seen at the football club. But you know, to see the likes of Matete start, Clark start, Diaku was back in the lineup, and Trey Hume, he uh, he proved that he is actually a real human being and he's, a, <laughs> and he's an actual right back as well. And but for the first half, I'm, I'm not going to you know just sit here and say the whole thing was crap because you know just for the sake of it, just because we lost because the first half we were decent. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't a perfect performance, but we were decent going forward. We actually looked dangerous, and Clark, how he's not been starting over the last couple of games, I don't know because he was absolutely frigging brilliant, um, and Diaku looked very dangerous on the right hand side as well. Stewart looked a somewhat isolated figure, um, but Clark, he was so direct, he was so so good, and that's what I love with him. You know, he's not a winger like Gooch would stop the play or, or, or someone else like an Emberton who will, who will kind of stop the play or at least he has been recently in his performances individually. Clark, as soon as he gets on the ball, he looks up and runs at the defender and that's what he was doing at that left back, or sorry, the right back on that left-hand side and our left-hand side. And there's a couple of times where he, ne he nearly scored. You know, he did actually lose the ball originally on one chance and then he immediately, he immediately got his head down and ran back to get the ball and he did, he nicked it straight back off him and then uh, had a crack at goal from distance, and it gone just past the right post. Uh, but he looked so, so dangerous. But at the back, generally Trey Hume did actually impress me. Um, it, going forward, he looked really decent. Defensively, he looked all right. Um, like I say, you can tell he's an actual, you know, natural right back. You know, I don't know why we keep on persisting with playing players out of position. Like Winchester, it would have been nice for me. I wanted to see Winchester and Matete in the middle. Um, because I do agree that Daniel does need a rest, so he needs to be pulled out somewhat for a time, for a period. Um, but that doesn't mean keep Evans in the side because he's been atrocious. You know, I know he scored in the last game, well, against Doncaster, so that might be the reason they kept him in. But other than that, his performance was horrendous against Doncaster. But I would have preferred to see Matete and Winchester in there, and of course Trey Hume right back. And uh, yeah, like I say, a few times Trey Hume on that right hand side, he'd bump forward and he'd look up, he'd see Evans in the middle. Again, I'm not just purely digging out Evans, but this would just does relate to Trey Hume's performance. He would bump forward, he'd, he'd look for the uh, the quick pass into Evans. It was a quick drill pass into into Evans, and he'd make the overlap, wanting to get the, the 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 ball back off Evans. But then Evans would either go backwards or he'd try and do like a clever ball, and he'd just ping it straight out, straight out of play. And it was just shocking. I just felt sorry for Hume because he kept on trying to make that overlapping run. Well, because Evans is just such a terrible footballer, he wasn't get, getting that overlapping, uh, that, that back pass to him. It was just never coming, that one two, which just never coming because Evans, like I say, he's an awful footballer. But uh, yeah, so in the first half, we're making chances, at, at times shaky at the back, but we seem to be in somewhat control. Pritchard, I was really, really happy for him because he got the free kick, top bin, top right hand corner, fantastic free kick. And like I say, it wasn't a perfect performance, but we seem to be in control somewhat. Then half time comes. No idea what those bloody clowns told the players, and of course you can't just, you know, falter Dodds and, and Proctor. 
But uh, in, in the second, you have to obviously give the uh, the players the criticism. But in that second half, they came out. They looked deflated, like I am. They looked deflated. The tempo dropped significantly. And literally 15, 20 minutes into into the second half, you could see that they weren't up for it. They looked completely downbeat in comparison to this into the first half. Cheltenham, of course, they, they, they were going to come out. They were fired up. They are going for the equaliser. But after 5, 10 minutes, you could see that this wasn't the team of the first half and something needed to change and we didn't change it. They eventually got an equaliser. We were far too late in our subs. Fair play to Cheltenham, particularly their second goal. It was fantastic. A great finish. But uh, defensively, horrendous. Um... And we just looked to completely. We looked a shadow of ourselves from the from the first half. We looked really, really poor. Two sides, two completely different halves. Um, which I know is cliche, but it's I think it's uh, it's warranted and it's accurate. Um, but yeah, the players need to look at themselves. You can't keep blaming managers, but the players definitely need to look at themselves. Because if you have a look at the league table now, you know the last three games. I think it was like what was it, like sixteenth, seventeenth, and bottom of the league that we've played, and we've come away with zero points. Had we have got those points, which I think on paper, before those games, I was very confident going into those games, thinking we would get nine points, or at least, you know, sort of seven points maybe. It, things would look a lot brighter because Wigan, you know, they lost last night, which and it just shows where uh, where this league is and how up and down it can be because, you know, they lost 1-0 to Chef Wednesday, who we beat, so, yeah, sorry, we beat 5-0. So, you know, it just shows how up and down the league is and anyone can beat anyone. And had we have made the most of our chances, which we did never, ever frigging do in this league, it would look a lot more rosy. And yes, granted, Wigan would have had those games in hand, but they would have had to win every single one of those games in hand to take over us had we have got those nine points, but we haven't. So they have so much leeway with their games in hand at the moment. Um, I just thought it was such a good opportunity last night. So even if we just got a dirty or a scrappy, you know, little 1 0 win, it would have been great to get a bit of momentum, uh, positive momentum under our belts before a new manager comes in. Now, you know, Kino, if it is to be Kino, to come in, he must be thinking what the hell is going on at this football club and maybe even pulling away because we've been so unbelievably poor. It's just been so deflating, you know, since, of course, we had that thrashing off Bolton. Then it felt like things started to turn on deadline day with Matete coming in, who I think looks fantastic. Defoe, of course, being the big one. And we thought, OK, we're on the up now, we're on the up. And we just had such deflating, blasé, lack of tempo performances. And it's... Uh, it needs to be sorted. The attitude of these players, I think, has to be questioned. Um, and, and I think the the owners need to be questioned. KLD needs to be questioned as well because you got rid of Lee Johnson. And just because we're having these bad results, by the way, does not mean... And I've seen people say, oh, we shouldn't have got rid of Lee Johnson, which if, if that was your original thought, then fair play, whatever. But there's, there's certain people who are saying, oh, we shouldn't have got rid of Lee Johnson now. When we were getting these kind of results when Lee Johnson was in charge anyway. So I do still agree that Lee Johnson shouldn't have been... Uh, oh, sorry, it, it was the the right decision to get rid of Lee Johnson. But it's been like over a week since he's been, um, since he was sacked. It, they should have had someone in place. It, they should have had something sorted. Apparently they're having different rounds of interviews, KLD with, and then Speakman of course. I mean, apparently there's like a second round of interviews with like Keane and stuff. Keane must be thinking, what the hell is going on? Who the hell gives Roy Keane a second interview? Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know whether they're buying time for something. I, I really don't know. But uh, they need to be questioned because they, they've just handled this absolutely abysmally. It's so, so poor. So poor they've handled this. Um, so I need to give it to them as well. But yeah, in terms of the performance, it wasn't good enough. We need someone in to give these players the boost that they need. They looked so like, they looked empty on confidence. Um, and just looked, they had no will and want and desire in that second half. They're just down tools for me. I mean, you know, the likes of Clark and Yaki were still really going for it. But like I say, the tempo would drop, the attitude weren't there. And it, and it was poor. But uh, yeah, so I'm just going to leave it at that, guys. Again, I know I don't have too much uh, oomph about me, too much passion about me at the moment because I'm just empty on energy myself with uh, watching the Sunderland side. And I'll, I'll be honest, it's freaking depressing. It really, really is. But uh, either way, what do you guys think of the game last night? Let me know in the comments below. But if you enjoyed, like, subscribe and all that nonsense. And uh, I'll see you in a bit.